Related rate problems are when you have two quantities, and of course their names are generally something more meaningful than A and B, but they're both changing and generally with time. And we know the rate of one, so we'll know the speed of something, and we want to know the rate or speed of something else. And so that's why they're called related rate problems. And we know, or we can find, maybe we have to look it up or think about it for a while, but we can always find some relationship between the two quantities A and B. So what we're going to use is a version of the chain rule. dA dt is equal to dA dB times dB dt. And to remember this version, to make sure you get it the right way, they're not fractions, but if they were fractions, if you canceled the dBs, you'd have dA dt. So this makes sure that you always write a version of the chain rule that is correct. You can always make sure it looks as if they were fractions, they'd be okay, but they're really not fractions. This is how A changes with respect to B and how B changes with respect to T. So let's look at a simple problem we can illustrate this example with. Stone falls in a pool of water and a wave spreads out in a circle. Its radius is increasing three feet per second. How fast is the area of the circle increasing at five seconds? There'll almost always be some other piece of information. Since both of these rates have, in general, non-constant changes with time, we'll need to know the change when, and so there'll be some piece of information to fix the problem at a point. So, and I'm going to give you three steps. We'll need to remember this rule, the chain rule, looks like this. And we'll need to follow these three steps to set up any of these problems. The first step is always to identify the rates. So rates are things that are changing. And if we look through this problem, it's very easy to find two. And there's, there's always going to be two. And that's why they're related. One is given, and one is the one you're asked to find. So reading the problem again, we see that waves are spreading out a circle. The radius is increasing at three feet per second. Radius is changing, it's increasing, and we have an amount. So that is a rate, dr dt, equals positive 3 feet per second. One rate, and there's always two. So the second one is the one we're finding. How fast is the area of the circle increasing at 5 seconds? How fast is something increasing? The area of the circle. So how is the area changing over time? dA dt equals question mark. So step one is always to identify the rates. dr dt is 3, dA dt is unknown. And that's how it'll be. One is known, one is unknown. Step two is to find the relationship between the quantities. So we, and now we've identified for sure we're talking about area and radius. And of course this is an easily known one. Area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, so let me move on to the next page where I've identified, written this out a little more clearly. So we identified the rates. dr dt is 3 feet per second. dA dt is unknown. The relationship, of course, between a and r are well known. a equals pi r squared. And now we're going to use that new version of the chain rule. dA dt equals dA dr times dr dt. <clears throat> so we notice dr dt, we know. I can put a 3 here. dA dr, okay, I don't know that. And dA dt, that's what I'm supposed to find. But dA dr is very easy to find. That's the derivative of a with respect to r. We may be more used to seeing x's or something, but it doesn't matter. Same type of derivative. So dA dr, very easy to find from the relationship, is 2 pi r. So dA dt then equals dA dr, which we just found, is 2 pi r times 3. Or maybe simplifying, we would have 6 pi r. Back to our original problem, we are asked to find this relationship at 5 seconds. So I'm supposed to take this problem here, which is a changing answer. The ADT changes based on R, but I'm going to find it when T equals 5. And, well, okay, I can't plug T in. I need to figure out R, but that's not going to be hard. DR DT is increasing at 3 feet per second, and when we threw the stone in, it started at 0. So at 5 seconds, if it increased 3 feet per second all that time, r would be 15. 5 times 3, so it's 15 uh, foot radius by then. So we would have 6 pi times 15, or 90 pi. Okay, and there actually, on many of these, there's actually another way to do it. We could simply take our a function, pi r squared, and our r function, r equals 3 times t, and we could use a composition of functions to make one new function. This is a as a function of r, and this is r as a function of t. So I have a as a function of r, 
r is a function of t, and I'm look, interested in finding dA dt. So I could find a new function, a is a function of t, by performing this composition of functions. Pi 3t, that's what r is, and squared, which would simplify down to pi times 9t squared. And now to find dA dt, I don't need the chain rule. I can use a simple derivative, and I get 18 pi times t, plugging in time equals 5 seconds, I get the same answer, 90 pi. Okay, I hope this has been an enjoyable and helpful description of, of related rate problems.